Hey guys, Seth here. I just want to make this quick video kind of going over um, my Die Mall East route. Uh, all my runs were on average under 15 minutes. I do want to keep talking to a minimum because you guys are obviously here to learn, not to hear me ramble. Uh, so let's just get right into this. The first thing I do want to mention though is when you zone into the instance, all the tree ants, all the mobs inside of the instance have a set pathing. So this route that I'm taking right now will always be clear as long as you do this, you know, as soon as you get in. Uh, while you're in here, or while you're running along this wall, there is actually a book, um, a dusty tome that's kind of right next to one of the rocks and the trees. Uh, I will have a part of the video that kind of goes over that location, so just be aware of that. But just know that you can actually get that book while you're running along this wall. I activate uh, Sense Demons right now, and the reason for that is because this satyr will always walk down, uh, walk past this gate as soon as you get to this spot. So you want to wait for him, and then. Right now, I'll zoom in because there is actually another satyr that could spawn here. I will kill the satyr that spawns here um, if it does show up. Uh, you know, do the usual opener, immolates, agonies, slife and life, and all that stuff. So here, I'm actually going to go ahead and skip the uh, boss real quick. I don't want to fight Hydra spawn yet. What I want to do is I want to put the Hellcaller because the Hellcaller uh, actually does an insane amount of damage. I think it's around like 15%. Uh, you can check the damage meters afterwards. It's something insane. Um, so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and um, just uh, make sure the auto cast is off the, the bolt and instead on uh, the rain of fire. Uh, you right click it. So and then what you want to do is you want to um, corruption and agony all the imps and then you want to drain life so you can take aggro from as many imps as you can because the imps do a ton of damage with the hellcaller and if the hellcaller dies, well, that's problematic. Um, it's also like a great place to get shards while you're learning because while you're going through this, you're going to be dying a lot. So just having a, a place to constantly refill your shards is definitely a great thing. So make the most of the satyrs and the imps as much as you can. Um, so here, once... Um, so here, you know, I'll right click and I'll put Fireball back on as the autocast. And you want to put them on passive because Hydra Spawn can actually bop the Hellcaller and it's super annoying if it goes. And you want to put them here so uh, you don't get fucked. Now here, I'm going to go ahead and do it in slow motion because this is oddly specific. You want to make sure the Hellcaller doesn't go the opposite way because... And he can also pull the paw, the, the fell lash over there, so... Just rewind, go back and see how exactly how I did that because it's actually insanely important because... If he goes the other way, if he pulls that pod right there, he'll actually, like... Um, it'll, it might create another form of ads or it literally might kill... Uh, the hell caller and if you get the ads then you know you're just gonna have to deal with those while you're doing with the fight and so you put him over there uh the hell caller over there because he'll do that little whirlpool that whirlpool is actually an aoe and if the hell caller is close to you you can actually get bumped into the fell lash so that's why you have them you know as far away as you can well not as far away as you can but just far enough right and then you just do the basic strategy you go around this pillar you go down you know put corruption on the little ads and let me just do it. You don't really have to be insanely risky with it. But the boss really isn't a heavy hitter. He's just annoying. Uh, the Hellcaller, once he's under 10% mana, you want to make sure you put him on stay because, again, you don't want him pulling that the pod right there. If he touches, if it gets near the pod, it might spawn the adds or it might like literally kill him. And you want to keep him um, because you can use him for the adds that are coming up later on uh, after the boss. But he dies for me, so I don't get to use him there. But it's also better than him, you know, pulling the ads. So I, I get Hydra Spawn Soul. And I loot. So for this next part, um, there's going to go, be two satyrs. And uh, normally what you want to do is uh, if you have the Hellcaller, um, you want to go ahead and just kill both, um, both of the satyrs with them. But since I don't have them or have the Hellcaller, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to... Um, Enslave the one that's down here if it spawns the one I just enslaved doesn't always spawn the one that's coming up um, Will is always um, is always spawned. So he's always going up and down this little hallway and uh, Again, if you don't have the hellcaller, what you're gonna do is at this one at the one at the bottom spawns You're gonna make this satyr attack the other satyr And then you're gonna go ahead and put an agony and a siphon life on the satyr that is being attacked and if the uh, one at the bottom doesn't spawn and your Hellcaller is dead, then you want to go ahead and slay the one that's pathing and then make him attack the boss. So that way, 
um, you know, the boss will attack him, the satyr will be dead, and then you can uh, just worry about the boss and you won't have to worry about, you know, killing the satyr, um, you know, and wasting time. So I go ahead and do the opener. I do not fight the boss where he's at. I pull him down here because I'd rather be safe. You can fight him up there, but if you get sacrificed, that's probably going to be a wipe. So while I'm waiting down here, I make bandages. Or um, if I don't have any bandages to make, I'll go ahead and disenchant any greens that I have, um, as well as any below market value uh, blues that I have. And so what I mean by that is um, brilliant, large brilliant shards were roughly uh, two gold worth. So anything that was less than two gold vendor price, that would go and disenchant. So for here, for the boss, I would basically treat as, uh, as I did with Hydra Spawn. I will say though, be super, super, super careful. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> because he does a sacrifice, uh, I mentioned it earlier, and I'm not sure if it was just the problem on my end or if it has to do with spell batching, um, but while he's, if you're not quick enough on the draw when you cast sacrifice, uh, you'll actually, like if you even, like if you move to the pillar, behind the pillar too late, like even if he's not at the end of the cast, the, you can still actually be uh, sacrificed. So as soon as you see that cast bar move, you just want to get behind the pillars as fast as you can. Now, in saying that, uh, you don't, when you want to get back into the water, you don't want to be uh, as reckless as I am here. Uh, I'll show it soon. Sometimes I'll jump in and play it safe like that. And other times, uh, it'll come up here soon. I'll go ahead and run it like that. And so it's a huge problem because uh, sometimes, and I'll show later in the video, sometimes if you run in like that, you can still be sacrificed if you run in too early or like early in the cast. And I'll show it later. So here's the Seder that I was talking about. Like if you, um, if you don't have the Hellcaller and you enslave the one at the bottom, instead of, instead of having to fight both of them, you can save time. The one's already dead. And now you're just killing this one at like, you know, below 10%. So at this point, you're just uh, cleaning up the boss. Um, I wouldn't recommend going for the soul shard while you're learning, but I mean, definitely as you get comfortable with the boss, I would definitely try to go for it. Uh, but just be safe about it. Again, like if you see that cast go off, stop. And so here's the clip that I was kind of referring to that sometimes if you run into the water like that, you'll just get sacrificed. And so here is how you actually want to do the pathing for Zevrum. You want to back up into the water, not like that. You want to. You want to back him into the water, kind of like that. And so, like, while you're backing out, know, so he'll like start pathing, you know, back up instead of like running at you. So you'll like reset his pathing. But you want to go ahead and just kind of weave it by backing up instead of running horizontally to the water, uh, because otherwise you're getting the panic sacrifice that I was kind of showing earlier, and that's like at least 30 seconds of time loss. And again, it's just a waste of time. So here I loot um, while I'm running down this little pathway. I check for the slater that we skipped earlier. Uh, he actually has like a weird pathing where he kind of walks diagonally So you want to skirt the wall and even then you want to wait to make sure that He's not at like the closest possible uh, Distance from the wall. So you just want to make sure you don't aggro that here uh, You can either rush it or you can wait but again You could probably usually make it just be aware that sometimes you will pull aggro and it can be a huge headache um, Here uh, I basically you have to run to this tree uh, you actually have to talk to him to open the door to Alzen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run you through kind of the pathing I take. Also, you want to be wary of those treants because they can actually aggro and that'll be a wipe. You want to go ahead and select that dialogue option and then you want to go ahead and play Frogger. I don't really have many tips for this part. I think it's more like experience and like getting comfortable with like the match you take. And so while there's some downtime before we get to the book locations, I do absolutely want to say that you need mining for this for the end. And I would absolutely recommend uh, enchanting uh, for the large billion shards and the greater eternal essences from the greens. Uh, but you definitely want to check your server auction houses because the prices for my materials were insane. Uh, but right now I'm going to show you the book locations. And so for this first one, uh, the footage kind of fucked off with my cursor. You can actually see the book from there. And then you want to run down that little pathway and you'll find the book right there. For this next book, this is the book I was refer referring to earlier. You can see the book from there, and it's back and like against the wall. You want to make sure you don't aggro the treant, and you should. If this book spawns, you can always find it while you're like you know running along the wall at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the run. And you can see me jumping. I'm all happy. <laughs> That's a narrow way for the tree to break the door down. Any second, and you want to use Skull of Impending Doom just to speed things along. 
Uh, you can use the uh, nifty stopwatch, but I uh, I use that if I'm running behind on my runs. You know, some RNG bullshit happens, or if I have, or if I get sacrificed in Zevrum. Uh, but I use this there for that. This tree is usually never here. I don't entirely understand what happened here. Maybe I guess it was too fast because I've, I've never seen this. <laughs> but uh, just you just want to wait for it. the trees actually have a huge aggro radius. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's just how they were programmed. So you want to wait. And while you're running along, normally you can just run to the spot I'm about to run to. And you want to make sure you don't aggro that while you're avoiding the other one. You want to run, like run around here, jump on this thing, jump on the pillar to minimize damage and minimize the recovery time. And then go ahead and bandage up. So I actually covered Alzen a lot more in depth in my uh, Imskip video. I guess the video right before this one. And uh, so I'm not really going in depth about going to go too in depth about that. Um, but I usually start the boss around here. Uh, Shadow bolts, immolates, all that good stuff. And the first, his first debuffs are super annoying to get uh, to avoid. So you want to run back here, or uh, run behind the pillar, that, the pillar to my right, if necessary. If he stops midway along his like pathing back to cast a debuff on you, it's super annoying. You'll probably get like a debuff. So I mean. Honestly, you probably just have to get used to it, but I mean, there are ways to avoid it, but it's difficult. Uh, so for Alzen, uh, I definitely recommend if you're starting out, probably not to even start out trying to do this right now, because you'll probably just die. What I would recommend instead is there is a red fell lash, or there's a red uh, plant, the big red plant in the back, it's called a fell lash, and Alzen's debuffs are all 40 yard ranges. Um, so what you want to do is you want to pull one of the, you want to kill the plants in the back, and then get a fell lash and then do exactly what you're doing here and then practice kind of ranging the fell lash so it doesn't cost uh, their arcane bolts because again it's the exact same range if you want to get range display you can see the numbers in the, in the middle like in between my uh, portrait and allison's portrait so when you see it's 35 it's like i 35 plus i know i'm in the ballpark of where i need to be in terms of distance um for you want to move back and forth between the rock and i guess this little railing i'm not entirely sure what that is and uh one like that you want to i don't show it too well here in the imp video i show it a lot better but you want to kind of like position your jumps um almost like in line uh or lined up with the outer edge of the pillar to your right um it just maximizes distance sometimes i do it even like a little uh behind it but here are the imps once Alzen gets to 50%, the imps will come out. You want to wait till the imps get around here. You wait for them to come here, and then you jump along the rock. You run to this little position here, and then everything will evade out, and then you can uh, cast your invis potions. Now, the reason why you do that is because there's line of sight issues with the imps. If the imps can see you, the potion can actually fail. And by doing this, you obviously skip Allison. so this is honestly what you want to do. I don't think killing Allison's worth. I think you just want to go for the you know big slot machines at the end. And so here I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward the video because just me getting a loop. But that's honestly about it. Um, you're gonna see here I hit the jackpot. It's gonna come up in a second. <sighs> but um, yeah, I mean honestly, like that's it. Uh, you're gonna see my time is around 13 minutes 40 seconds. And as far as gold per hour goes, with enchanting, I've never gone below around 70 gold per hour. But I guess, like, I guess to be super conservative, I've never, I've absolutely never gone below 50 gold per hour. Um, I've gone as high as honestly 200 gold per hour because <laughs> I've gotten, uh, I think maybe three arcane crystals. Uh, you'd honestly be surprised how lucky you can really get with this, uh, uh, with the arcane crystals. Uh, I, but I've gone times where you know I've done like a day without an arcane crystal, and absolutely sucks. But again, with enchanting, I've never gone below around 70 gold per hour, which is a lot more uh, than Marden for me. So all around is just a great gold farm. And I will actually be making more videos, uh, definitely other gaming stuff, probably not related to WoW. That might disappoint some of you guys, but uh, I definitely want to like talk about like other games that I guess like are near and dear to me. And I also uh, kind of want to get into politics. Um, maybe not everybody's cup of tea, but I think it affects a lot of people and I think it's important to talk about. So if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, uh, stay tuned. I'll definitely have a lot more coming. And to wrap it all up, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I put a ton of time into it, learning Audition, Photoshop, Premiere. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell button, follow me on Twitter. 
And if you like the music in the background, please give my boy Day Vision a follow on SoundCloud and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Um, he's making a ton of music right now, and I'm sure he just loves a ton of new people listening to his stuff. And that's it. Take care, guys. I'll see you guys soon.